I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Creek Devil. We're really happy to have Joe and Walter in Texas joining us. They have an update, some stuff going on. Fellas, how you doing? We're doing pretty good, at least I am. How about you, Walter? <laughs> oh, I'm doing great, great. Well, I, I guess the only way to approach this is you sent us some pictures and some stuff happened recently. So I'm just going to turn the microphone over to you guys and uh, tell us what happened. Well, you know, we went out camping um, what about a month ago, Walter? Yeah. Yeah, we went out camping. Uh, we set out some mics, you know, some recorders. Um, we got some pretty good vocals on that trip, I guess, you know. Um, uh you know um th th that whole place where uh where, where walter had his experience his encounter really it's just such a weird weird place and then um uh, walter went out like two weeks after that and he found something interesting right walter tell him about the, what the the tree break you found well uh, uh on on the way in to to our side there's there's like i said before there's no exit except for the one road that you used to come in and about i would say 10 yards from where you, we park there's a branch that was above the road and it's a pretty good thick sized branch it seemed like it was twisted and thrown in the middle of the road kind of I don't know I guess kind of I feel like kind of a stay away kind of deal right right and so when I went back it, and it was it's definitely covering more than half the road the picture does really don't do it justice but yeah it's definitely covering more than half the road you gotta you know there's very enough room for the truck to get around um and yeah 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 it, it just happened so quickly and is it right in that area that where Walter had his his encounter, um, we did some walking around there Saturday, uh, last Saturday, and uh, we found some what looked like prints, and we weren't really sure at first what the heck kind of prints they were, and it wasn't until after I got home I started to really really think about it. And I'm like, dude, these are these got to be knuckle prints, you know? And uh, so we went back there. No, we went there on Friday, and then Saturday when we went back there, that's when we. We wound up casting them, and these uh, they were at least four and a half feet apart, maybe even closer to five. Um, so whatever it was, it, it had a big stride. Um, you know, it it, all, it almost looked like a hoof print, but whatever it was, it left ridges like 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 knuckles, you know, and it, and it certainly like dug up the ground like it was you know pushing off and. The one thing also I'll say is that me and Walter and even Lupe walked that area, and we didn't make any kind of impression on the ground other than the surface. Right, Walter? Right. Yeah, yeah. you know those impressions look like five digits. You can count the uh, you can count the impressions. Right, and Walter uh, actually had to dig his boot into the ground to make uh, an impression like that because that it, it even though it's sandy, it was very hard. It was very uh, compact sand. And, uh, yeah, I, I was trying to recruit to try to see. I mean, if some did somebody walk through here, you know, trying to debunk whatever he could have been before. And if it was a human, I mean, they would have to been walking on their tiptoes. And you know, you're talking about a five foot stride on 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 your tiptoes, you know, or maybe four and a half to five foot stride on your tiptoes, and at the same time digging into the ground. I, I think even the person that was running wouldn't have been able to create that. Um, and like I said, there was clearly would look like digits you know um yeah and the very first one wasn't that deep but the other three were and i'm thinking that first one if this if this is one of those creatures that that's when it initially got down on all fours you know um we all seem to have had the same opinion that it happened that day and we were even wondering if it happened 
because it was on the opposite side of that road that we were on, and we were even thinking, man, I wonder if while we were on the other side of the forest, uh, if it if it came from uh, to kind of check up to see what we were doing, you know. Um, so that was kind of scary because, I mean, they were fresh. Will I'm saying they were they had to have been that you know that same day, if not within you know the time that we were there. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't think they were there when we got there. The pictures yeah. looked fresh. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, uh, I mean they were just that ground was so compact it almost had like a crusty layer to it if that makes sense and and and, and you could tell where that layer broke and it, it, looked, it just looked so fresh um you know and like, like i said even lupe was like man this happened today you know and you know lupe is a good tractor tractor uh tracker as you'll find you know he, he really knows the outdoors and and that guy you got to keep an eye on him right walter he yeah. would disappear in a heartbeat <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I turned around at once and, and I told you, man, this guy's a pirate. <laughs> hey, Joe, uh, hey. Walter, quick question. I'm looking at this picture and the one where you, you're straddling and I see that it looks like a, it definitely looks like, you know, like a handprint, not a handprint, but you know, where it would have almost scraped with some fingers. Um, it looks like, now is this a riverbed or what's, what's all the sand from? I, I think it's maybe from uh, a previous rain because it had rained. Uh, well, it's been raining here for like three months. You took and, the uh, words out of my mouth. That was my next question. The sand is pockmarked. It looks like it's been. It looks like a recent rain there. Yeah, it, it, it's been raining here off and on for like the last three months, probably all year, really. Uh, so I'm thinking it's it, it's from just sediment that's kind of flowed downhill. Um, and, well, uh, the, the important thing is is if you look at that picture. Uh, your right foot is just, you know, right in front of it is that, that hand mark or scrape mark from, you know, knuckles or whatever. All the sand around it, <clears throat> I just want to make this, kind of point this out, has that appearance of being pockmarked, you know, right. by rainfall. But that isn't. So that was well after uh, whatever, you know, whatever rain, I don't know when it rained, you know. Uh, was it that day or it yeah, had recently? probably been about three or four days previously that it had rained? Okay, yeah, so those are real fresh, real fresh marks. Yeah, yeah. so we, we left some recorders there and we left some, but maybe what, two or three miles down the road, Walter would, at that little bridge. Um, so the next morning, we'll, we, we we're going, and I've been to this site, I don't know how many times, seven, eight times, I guess, already. I've never gotten nervous there. We're, we're going over there and we're talking just like normal and right before we get to that tree uh break i mean i got that that's the first time in like three years that i really really got kind of nervous almost to the point of being scared uh i just felt like the insides were trembling my my, my hands were just about to get ready to shake i was clenching my jaw and i told walter i said hey man I, i'm feeling very weird i haven't felt like this in a long time and uh that put him on high alert too <laughs> so we get to the site and I'm like, dude, let's just get our recorders and let's, you know, let's get out of here. Well, you know, after we cast the tracks, we wanted to make sure we cast those those tracks. And I'm calling them tracks because they are some kind of track, you know. Uh, you know, with this they're, they're, this tree that's broken is was it twisted? It looks like it's twisted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely twisted. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. It. I mean, it's it, it looks like something just ringed it almost like a. You know, like a wash towel, you know, it, it, it's definitely got a twist to it. Do you remember, how? Uh, two questions, I guess, how far off the ground it this was and how oh, how man. thick, how thick is the branch? And, yeah, I bet that thing was every bit of 12 feet off the ground. Okay. And, you know, um, uh, how big around, um, I don't know, four inches right right, right in that ballpark. It, it was at least that, I'd say. That's pretty thick. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it, and 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 that tree is green, as you can tell. It it's, looks, it's a green tree. It looks freshly done. Yeah. Uh, so, like I said, we were there a month ago. Walter saw that tree two weeks later, and then this is two weeks after that. So, uh, so within that amount of time, that you know that tree was broken and it's still very, very green. You know, all the leaves are still very green uh, from the two weeks previously to when Walter saw it. Um, and there's no other damage to any of the trees there. And we did find a lot of trees that are just like snapped off at the top, especially like these, uh, I guess they're saplings. They're probably good, a good three, four inches around too. And they're just snapped, you know, about seven, eight foot high off the ground. And, 
you know, they're like I said, they're probably, you know, three, four, maybe five inches in diameter, and they're, and they're just snapped, you know. Um, I, I don't know what could have went up there and twisted that tree, but we measured where Walter saw that his, and it's, it was nine and a half feet, Will. Uh, because I think I told you from the last time we were on that there was like a white mark on a tree, it, and it's actually like a fungus. I asked Lupe about that, and he said, yeah, because that's a fungus. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where his head was at so that we, we had a good measuring spot for it and we, we measured it when we went out camping a month ago and it was nine and a half feet tall so that could have easily reached up and twisted that branch if that's what the same creature did that uh you know that twisted that branch and so, right across from it was the those three tree branches that are snapped yeah and then they're put together like three different trees there they were snapped and just bent the weird and there's and there's one tree um uh, that we were examining where like i said the top part of it was broken and uh, and it was a pretty you know green tree too uh and it was laying on the ground because we thought this other tree was was part of it but it's not so we don't even know where this other part came from and it was stabbed into the ground what Walter about good five inches into the ground. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it was stabbed like a javelin, you know. And uh, so we don't even know where that tree came from because there was no other trees around, you know, that perimeter you, that, that that we found them. Did you guys get a picture of that one? I yes. didn't take a picture, but but you did, Walter. Yeah, I have pictures. Okay. Yeah. Can you can you send that? And the reason I asked is because. Uh, we talked to some guys <clears throat> recently in Australia, and that's one of the things that they found was in an area where there's, you know, they, they, they're convinced that there's no people there. And there's just a trail every so often of one of these sticks stuck in the ground. And it could not have happened naturally. It couldn't have fallen that way. It would have, you know, if it fell, it's going to land on its side. So that's why I like to see the picture. That is really uh very compelling information and um so while we were there getting those our recorders and waiting for the uh uh the plaster to dry on on the, on the prints uh, i went down the road because i actually put my recorder uh not that far away from that uh tree break uh i just want to leave a recorder over there and i only left the thing off the road like maybe three feet off the road and just reaching into that little forest area right there to get my recorder man i was i was nervous i was really really nervous and uh walter goes well we still gotta go get mine he left his even further back and it was maybe about like 60 feet or so and uh yeah i, I was nervous going in there you know the, the whole time um uh, then we got back to the truck and there's like a little clearing where we uh park because it's at a dead end and uh so we got back there. We were just standing around in that opening. I told him, you know, this is it's not a very big opening, but man, I felt just so much better staying there than being in the woods that day. And then we heard what sounded like something very heavy getting thrown and, and hitting the ground. I, I, we didn't go investigate to see what it was because I was on edge and I wasn't about to go to see what it was. But it, something was definitely, uh, I, I'd say, thrown at us. And also, but maybe five minutes before that is when we heard the murmur, right, uh, Walter? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we both turned around and looked at each other. I'm like, man, did you hear that? And he's like, yeah, I heard it. And I said, it sounded like somebody was talking, right? But it just sounded like one being rather than two. It just sounded just like a murmur, and we couldn't understand what the hell was being said. But, yeah, so we were uh, kind of nervous on that day. At least I was. Well, I felt like puking. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, – yeah, it, it was uh, – yeah, it was kind of scary. That's the first time I felt like that in quite a few years, at least three years. I used to go in there pretty happy-go-lucky. I mean, I'm looking for sign. I'm looking on the ground, looking up in the trees. And uh, Saturday morning, my head was just on a swivel. I, swivel. I was just looking around and just trying to watch everything. What do you think the distance was? How far away was the, the murmur? Like 10 yards, 50 yards? I, I I don't think it's on it too far. I, no. I think it's on it it's on it close enough for us to be worried and far enough where we should have gotten the heck out. <laughs> yeah, if, if I had to put a number on it, I'd say 60, 70 feet. You know, it, it wasn't far at all because it was 
it was a pretty clear murmur. It was pretty clear, you know. And, um, That's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. It, it it sounded like it was trying to be quiet, but it was close enough to where we heard it. Well, and he threw that log at us, and I turned yeah, around. The other direction, yeah. And I asked you, was that you? And, yeah. and you're, you're looking at me like, what the hell? No. <laughs> and, and he's sort of standing right next to me, but he just sounded like, they threw something in our general direction. Yeah. Like I said, we were like in a little opening and it, it landed right right in the uh, right in the edge of the forest, you know. And uh, I, I'd say something was thrown because if something would fell out of the tree, you would have heard it hit the branches, you know. It, but you just heard it go whoosh, whoosh, boom, you know. It, it sounded like, you know, you could hear the whistling as it was going through the air and it hit the ground. Yeah. And then I can say, and but then we found like this big chunk of uh, concrete in the back of the woods. Also, it, it had nothing to do yeah. with it. Had nothing to do with, with what was thrown, but we just thought it was kind of weird that we found this big chunk of concrete in in the out the woods. That you know, it could have came from anyone, I guess. But why would anyone carry a big old chunk of concrete? You know, right. it looked like a it looked like the chunk of concrete, like when people put a post. You know, how it kind of has a round shape to it for the hole. That's what it looked like. You know, like it had been inside, it had been the ground at some time. It was only like maybe like half of it. Like who's carrying around chunks of concrete in the woods? Yeah. But that was <clears throat> and there's no other no other chunks or no other no. not at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, it, it, it seemed really out of place. Yeah. It was just completely out of place. And then, you know, uh, we did find an area that was flattened out. It was a big area full of pine needles and and and, and, uh, and leaves. It was just everything was just so flat there. I, I it looked like something had been laying there, and I, I'm not saying it was big or, not, or nothing like that. But hogs would have tore up that ground, and we didn't see any sign of hogs. And then that particular area, I don't know if I've seen any kind of uh, sign of hog out there. I've seen deer out there for sure, but I haven't seen any hogs out there. And this whole area looked like it was just matted down. It was a pretty big area, maybe, I don't know, eight by eight, eight feet, right? Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't like that before when we went there those two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we it, took a picture of that. And lush and, you know, covered in, in little trees. And, and that wasn't too far from the track way either, from the, from the prints that we got. I mean, it was, you know, man, 15, 20 feet maybe away. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it wasn't very far from that either, so... So that whole area, man, it's just uh, it's got a weird vibe to it. I think it's a good area, and uh, you know we definitely have plans of going out there again. And I'm really trying to hope that we could contact somebody to you know, let us camp out there because a lot of that place is a private property. But uh, that's what we really want to do is go out there and just camp and see what happens. So the area that you're in, you know, with the knuckle prints and all that, that's. Do you have to get permission first to, to camp there? Or? I'm just yeah, not I, camp, but to just to hike on the property. Yeah, I think so. But, but this is right off the road, so we're like, no, we're going oh, to okay, yeah. gotcha. So all this stuff that we're looking at here is close to a road, right? Is it a right. uh, like a gravel road or paved road? Or? It's a, it's a dirt. Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it's off okay. dirt. It's got the, those little bitty. I forget what you call them. Those little bitty rocks. So that they, when they put it down, right? But yeah, but they put that down at some areas and the rest of the area. Uh, man, I guess a good mile in. It's nothing but dirt road. Yeah. Well, the reason I ask is is a lot of animals use the, you know, the power cuts and the, and the roads and stuff because it's you know path of least resistance, right. and it just makes sense that these would do the same thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I've seen deer on, on, on that road. Um, I was driving down, and there was like, man, I don't know, four or five deer right just walking down in front of me. They didn't, didn't have a care in the world that I was coming up behind them. And then not till I got closer, they, they finally you know, ran into the woods. But, yeah, they didn't care. Except for when we were leaving. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we when we were leaving. Two deer running for their lives, and they just jumped the road. And then you had the window down, and it sounded like something was after it, didn't it? Yeah, I heard a, I heard a sound like a branch, you know, snapping or breaking after we stopped the truck. And I started recording, but I, I, you couldn't hear nothing because your engine was running. Yeah, yeah, but that was that. Yeah, that was a that was the only time I think I've seen deer running that whole area. And that Saturday morning we were leaving, 
So this maybe kind of just kind of added to the mystery, I guess. So do you think they were they were something was in pursuit? Well, they were spooked. I I, I know that much. Uh, I mean, they were running. They weren't galloping. They weren't walking. I mean, they were moving. And we've I've, I've never seen them do that before. Usually, you drive right past them and they just stand there and look yeah. at you. Yeah, right, right on the side of the road, they'll, they'll stare they, at you. They really couldn't care less. But this time, no, this time they were they were running from something. Yeah, it had nothing to do with you guys. I mean, if well, I would have stopped them, they would have probably hit the truck. Yeah. Yeah, well, that second one probably would have hit. Yeah. Yeah. And this is an area that you guys have checked out in the past quite a bit, right? Since Walter's encounter, yeah, yeah, it's it, it's a good area, and uh, I like it. And uh, you know, we always get something good on the recorders. You know, even uh, Walter, like I said, he left his recorder there, and I, and I left one further out. And uh, he got some pretty good what sound like screams. And I got a couple of wood knocks on mine. The one I left by the bridge that was further out. I got a couple of wood knocks on that. And, okay. Yeah. And also, when you hear the wood knocks, they're kind of they're originating from, well, out out in the trees or out in the woods somewhere. Yeah. Let me do this. Um, can you recap Walter's encounter? We have a lot of new listeners out there, and they would love to hear, uh, you know, the highlights of that. Um, it was in November 8th, I believe. Uh, we got there. It was a group of three people. We got there and, you know, we had the idea of, you know, searching the woods for the famous Bigfoot, which I had no knowledge about at this point in time. And um, as we're talking to each other and, you know, getting our equipment ready, a guy shows up in a pickup, gets out and says, uh, you guys OK? Yeah, we're fine. Oh, you're looking for Bigfoot. And that struck us as very, very odd. Uh, long story short, he uh, offered to take us somewhere to see the Bigfoot against our better judgment. We said, yeah, sure, why not? Like, as if it was a good idea. And uh, so we drive down a little bit, ways down the road. Nothing happened there. So he offered again. Again, we say yes. And once we got off the vehicles, I started walking to the right side of the road of the of the forest, and there was a tree that's on the creek that's almost on top of the creek, and so it's at an angle, and there was a a big scat, about a coke can size kind of scat, and I was trying to make sense of it because I've seen a lot of scat before from other animals, you know. It doesn't compare at all to a bear scat. It has n it's nothing like it. Uh, and as we're looking at it, we received this low growl from across the creek, a growl that was so mind. I'm, it was the most disturbing thing you could hear. It it wasn't a scream. It was like a growl, like a, like a possessed lion or or. or some kind of demon and with each growl your rib cage would vibrate to the sound and man i've never heard anything that scary so i have the brilliant idea to jump on the creek because at that time it didn't have that much water and try to find some prints and then it was like i it was like i cursed at it it started growling even more and everybody's saying, oh, don't be dumb, you know, get out of there, you know, it's going to eat you, whatever, it's going to kill you, you're crazy, get out of there. So, he did a really, really loud growl, and that one just scared the heck out of me. And we all got out of there, and we masked kind of in the middle of the road, where we parked the vehicles. And that's where all the sounds started going off. They started imitating cows and coyotes and, you know, all kinds of sounds. And and it was just hard to figure out, man, what the hell is that? Because it would do a cow, but at the end it would get excited and it would do like a simian rah! And then you would hear the, the coyotes howl, and, you know, 
and at the end it would it would I mean it started out as a howl. So it would go like oh and then woo, 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 woo. like it would get like I don't know like a singing type of scream. And it got very scary. We got objects thrown at us. I mean, you could hear them. They were, I mean, they had to be doing it on purpose, of course, to let us know that we're there. But I felt like they were funneling us uh, away from the main road and kind of in the, in, in a V-shape type of, of, of hunt. And it was scary. I mean, I was, I, I've never been that scared in my life. I, I, I almost lost my mind. And uh, somebody yelled, there, there, there. So I instantly told everybody, stay together. And I grabbed my gun, and I'm pointing out in the middle of the forest to the left side of us. I would say maybe 8.30 to 9 o'clock. And out of this big, thick tree, this head bobs out and kind of takes a look at me and just... I just froze. I, I've never seen anything quite like that. He kind of hides back again, shows his head again, looks at me, you know, and gives me that up and down look. And I just feel every inch of my body frozen. And at this point, I know all I'm going to do with this gun is just piss it off and it's going to kill me. It's going to shred me to little pieces. And I've never felt that impending fear of death. Like, I, I, I felt like that was my last day alive. And I holstered the gun, and he does this one more time. And you could see his shoulders were probably about five feet apart. I mean, they were so wide. You could see them on each side of the tree. And I put my hands up in the air, and I start saying, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You know, I'm dead. I'm done. And I start walking back to the middle, and I'm just waiting for this thing to grab me and absolutely shred me to pieces and well luckily for me that didn't happen but we got in our cars and we took off but that was wow what are you thinking uh before you see the thing you're hearing these howls that go into this simian whoop 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 um you've obviously never heard that before it's something new what what do you what's going through your mind when you hear this what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a constant internal struggle, if that makes any sense, because I've been hunting before in the forest, and I've heard uh, the, the animals actually make the real sounds, and you just, it's mind baffling. You're just sitting there, and you're like, did I just hear what I think I heard? I mean. I know that's not a cow because that's not how cows move, but it was pretty darn close. And once you start hearing the simian and the screams attached to it, wow. It's like, what is, I mean, it's just amazement and you being scared to death, a mix. It was just yeah. terrifying. And this is the first time you've heard anything like this, and then you continue on, and then you see the creature. So right. you really don't have a frame of reference uh, in your past to compare this with, right? No, no, not at all. It was it was the most terrifying thing because, I mean, like you just said, there's nothing in my, there's nothing in my, uh, in my mind to compare it to or to go off of. I mean, what am I looking at? I mean, I've never seen anything... I mean, it's, it's, this thing, this thing gave me nightmares for the longest time. And actually, Joe is the one that helped me kind of get through it. And if it wasn't for Joe, I wouldn't be even doing this. You're welcome, <laughs> I guess. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, from the first couple of times that I went out with Walter, I mean, I could see how much. Uh, matter of fact, we were talking about this, weren't we, Walter? Yeah. And I could see the. I, I could see how much he's he, he's overcome because uh, even when those deer ran out in front of us, he, he he stopped the truck pretty quick, but he didn't lock it up like like he did the first time when we saw a squirrel run out in front of the truck, and he locked them. You know, he locked them up. I'm really. Uh, I, I laugh about it when I say it, but I'm glad I had my seatbelt on that day because I probably would have went through the windshield. But 
Yeah, even though he's, he he did stop hard when the deer ran out in front of us, it wasn't like it was the, when he first went out there. And I was telling him that uh, when he first went out there with him, I mean, he was like rubbing his pant legs. You know, like if your pants get sweaty, uh, you, you kind of wipe them off. I mean, he was just walking around like that, just rubbing it. He didn't even realize he was doing it. I was telling him. Uh, I, said, I said, you don't do that anymore. He's like, I was doing it. I'm like, yeah, I could just see how tense you were, you know. And so he, he's gotten a lot better. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad for that. You know, I'm, I'm happy for him that he seems to be getting better on, you know, as far as getting too tense out there and, uh, you know, getting, uh, you know, let fear get the best of you. Because, you know, like I said, I was, I was scared Saturday. You know, I was definitely uh, on edge, but I still was out there and I was still looking around and, you know, trying to play it cool. I guess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but I'm gonna say it, it was kind of hard to stay cool that day because it was just in the air. I mean, sometimes you just get this weird feeling, and and I hadn't gotten that in a long time, and and I just felt like vomiting. That day was was weird, and then like you said, you know, we heard that murmur and. Then that object that was thrown at us. I mean, I, I honestly think that when we went to the to the left side, which is the side where I had the encounter, and we started actually following that creek, I think that they came from the other side and they were like keeping tabs on us at a safe right. distance. Right, and that would explain why they were on their all fours. You know, that's why explain why they were on their knuckles. Because you know, if they were standing up, we would have been able to see them. Because even there were points. Back, even though we were pretty far back in the creek, I could still see the truck, you know. And uh, uh, so, yes, I mean, if, but if they were on their uh, fours, we would have never seen it. I don't, I don't want to say them, but definitely at least one. Joe, I sent you the picture. Uh, okay. I don't know if you can send it to Tom. Yeah, I'll send it to him after the, sh after the show. Yeah. I'll definitely send it to him. And, and on the recorder, uh, like Joe said, he... I think it was at 7, 50, 7 hours and 56 minutes uh, that everything started. You could hear uh, a tree knock. And I th at first I thought it was uh, like somebody shot or something. Because that's, that's how loud it was. It sounded like a shot. And then you can hear, and, and, and I've been really thinking about this. It sounded like there were two female sasquatches yelling and screaming at each other huh. I, I mean it just and it goes on for quite a while quite a while and they're just yelling at each other back and forth back and forth and then at some point you hear a male just do a one loud scream and then everything stopped so I'm not sure what was going on, but I mean, what was it um, that made you think it was female? Was it the tone of voice or the tone? The the the, the tone of, of of the of the. I mean, I, I, can, I can send you the recording so you can hear it. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm looking at the uh, picture. This is the one of the where you're talking about the uh, tree branches. It's kind of wrung like a wet towel. Only it's it's you know taken back. It's funny because the tree is it's green. It's so it's a real fresh break or twist or whatever. But they've shoved uh, half that tree on the ground. Yep. And it's very thick vegetation in there. I, I would say just beyond that tree, you don't have any any more than ten or fifteen feet right. uh, visibility. Correct. Yeah, and I just want to kind of let everyone know that, like I said, it's, it happened within the last month, and you know we haven't had any kind of hurricanes. We sh certainly haven't had any kind of freeze. Uh, you know, even even tornadoes would have you know left a path of destruction throughout the forest. Well, you know? right, it's exactly. You, it, they're not selective. This is one tree yeah. chosen, and. Even if it was like a you know like an eighteen wheeler, which I don't think an eighteen wheeler would fit down this road, but it would have done it would have hit a lot more trees, you know, on the way in, and I don't know how it would turn around and get out, but you know. Yeah, I mean the whole forest looks completely normal unless until you look at that single branch, it just it seems like something twisted it, 
and just left it there, you're not coming in, period. And like I said, in, um, in one of the pictures that I posted in the group of, of the branch, you know, hanging down and actually touching the ground, it's, uh, you know, we were very much inside, you know, what I would call the encounter zone. You know, our, uh, that's where we were sitting. We're sitting in the truck and we're still very much inside the, you know, where you had this encounter. And this is the same area where you guys put your recorders. Right. Okay. Right. And then, uh, do y'all remember that that growl I sent you guys? Didn't I sent you the uh, the growl I heard? What I got? I actually got on, on recording. Um, I don't I don't remember. I, I think I sent it to Will. I, I think there was a growl. If not, I'll, I'll I'll resend that to Will and let you hear it. And this is like in uh, what February? Uh, I think it was in February, like right right before Valentine's Day, as a matter of fact. Um, and you know, it was cold and. Uh, some of the people I, I let listen to were like, man, you know, that sounds like a gator almost, but you know, the gators worn out at that time. You know, it was it was, it was way too cold. It was still very much winter time. And uh, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I think that, that route came off of your recorder. Was it your recorder or my recorder? I don't remember. But no, that was yours. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it was cold. You know, those those well during that whole uh, winter, we had a cold winter here. So the gators hadn't even come out yet, and there's still no sign of gators in that creek. You know, um, you know, you can see where the gators come in and out of, of, of creeks or lakes or what have you, and there's there's no sign at all of, of any kind of gator. Yeah, you know, I'm just thinking about that story um, or the encounter where the thing growled at you, and you said it's it did it, it, it was almost like a projected growl so right yeah at you. definitely, definitely. Well, let me tell you something uh here in oregon my buddy and i this was a year ago two days ago so it was, no well it was it was early august of 2020 and he had the exact same situation i was in front of my truck and so the engine was running so i didn't hear it but all of a sudden he just comes running over and says we need to get in we need to get going now and i know what we're doing and i know where we're at so i'm not going to ask questions we're just, and uh he said that he had and we were inspecting some scat in the middle road he had and we we're using a paper plate as a kind of a scale for the you know for for the picture anyway he threw it in the back of the truck and he said this thing growled at him from forest and he's been elk hunting for 30 years, and he had never heard anything like that. It said it was his presence objectionable, it was disturbed, and it wanted him gone. So it's virtually very similar to the story that you guys just, situation you encountered. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that was uh, one of my famous stories, I guess you could say, the, the ground that I got, you know, that was uh, – we were at a different location. Walter to that location. That's when the, the, I had the dog whistle. I don't know if you remember that story or not, Tom. But I was blowing on the top or the on a dog whistle when I got that that growl. You know, me and my buddies that we were with, we got that growl. It was like it went from point A to point B. You Tell know, me it was, about it. Let, let's hear that story. Let's give well, us. Well, you know, I was out there uh, with my buddy Ernie and Shane, and um, we we stopped at this area that you know pretty popular area. Right? area that everyone goes to and i had a dog whistle and i just someone had told me to try it and i was like okay i'll try it you know and i, I blew it like four or five times and as soon as i uh, finished i mean we got this growl and it it was so loud but it was it, it didn't fill up the forest loud it was like it came from point a to point b right at us you know like it was definitely directed from us and it was probably a couple hundred yards away um but yeah, you, you could hear where it started, and you could feel it when it when it got to us where it ended, and that was definitely projected towards us. I think blowing that dog whistle, it it wasn't uh, it didn't like it, and uh, that's one thing I wanted to ask Walter if you wanted to take a dog whistle out there <laughs> to try it, see <laughs> see what happens. You Probably know. not. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's funny I, you guys mentioned that. I bought a dog whistle yesterday at okay at Cabela's and. Uh, I know the cats can hear it. I know the dogs can hear it. I'm debating whether I'm going to take it up in the woods and try it out. Yeah, I'm. 
I mean, I'm going to try it again. You know, I, I've always, ever since then, I, matter of fact, I got rid of it. And I said, I'm never taking this out there again. But I, I'm going to go back out to that location out, and I want to try it. Just to see what happens. Uh, listen, man, I'm going to stand right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you know, if it, it could be a distress call of a, of a younger uh, Bigfoot, you might have the parents come roaring out there. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a question for Will. Uh, uh, I heard uh, that some or somebody was telling me a story that usually the females challenge each other and the males let it go on for a while. And uh, at the end, they bow to each other. They don't they don't attack each other, but they just yell at each other. At the end, when the male has had enough, he makes a yell, and then the females bow to each other. Well, it's not just—it's not just the male; it's uh, it's the sub males also. Usually, usually the alpha. We've had an account. Um, there was somebody we interviewed a long time ago that actually heard uh, two groups encounter each other, and there was a lot of like you would expect with chimps. There was a lot of ruckus going on back and forth, and then finally, uh, apparently the dominant alpha of the two groups roared and then everything went silent and the two groups passed each other quietly and peacefully hmm. oh, it's amazing and then not long ago i i asked joe hey joe do you have a place where i can go you know and feel safe uh <laughs> walking in the and you know hiking and he goes yeah go to you know this place so I go over there with a friend, and uh, we got there very early in the morning. I think it was like 7.30 in the morning. And we start walking in the forest, and my friend was vaping. And the top part of his vape, I think I think we walked about a quarter mile in. We weren't even all the way in yet. But we started walking in, and he was... He had all this vape coming out of his mouth and, and nose, and the top came out or, and fell on the ground. And as soon as he bent over to grab it, they started throwing rocks and logs at us, and we couldn't see where it was coming from because it there was so much dense foliage all around us that we couldn't see you know it, it was just and then i'm a small guy i'm, I'm not that tall anyways see, but. you guys went where they weren't <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know you know what's funny i had to put like, that in you know, for time I, well he but when he, he, he had told me about going out there i said you know what go to this location it's a nice location you know you might get some tree knocks you might get a whoop or something like that you know i said but they're real calm over there i didn't know all this was going to happen to them. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, they're throwing. I mean, and they did uh, three mock charges at us, and uh, I immediately put my hands up and I said, "Okay, okay, you know, it's your house. We're leaving. We get it. We get the message." And uh, as we're walking out, they just kept throwing things, and you can hear it in the recording. Uh, I got a video of it, and I want to send it to you guys so to see what you guys think. Let me ask you: What do you mean mock charges? You saw them or heard them or? Oh, we There's heard details on that. Us. We we as we were walking out because at in the beginning you felt like running, obviously. So I said to my friend, "No, no, no, don't run, walk," because I don't want to trigger. Since we're still learning about these creatures, I don't know if they're gonna if if you run if you're gonna activate some kind of. Uh, uh hunting instinct in them so i said let's just walk 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 and and as we're walking you could hear him running from the left of us and then you would turn around and look in that direction to you know because he felt like it was an imminent charge and then he would stop and then you would hear it from the right side and so you were just looking everywhere it was scary. It was scary. Yeah, I get a text at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8.30 oh, in the yeah. morning. I was so scared that I texted, Joe, I'm being attacked. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just waking up because at that time I worked nights. And I heard my phone go off, so I looked and I saw Walter and he said, we're being attacked. And I'm like, what do you mean you're being attacked? Where, where are you at? You know, <laughs> it was kind of funny. But... So what... 
you guys walked out of there. I mean, how long did it take to get out? And did they uh, did they pace you? In, you know, in their aggressive. They paced uh, us to the edge. Uh, it took us probably probably about five minutes to get out of there because we were power walking, uh, you know, with our tails tucked in and just trying to stay as safe as we possibly could. And um, they paced us toward, I think, until the edge of the forest, and that was it. We, we left. We left. I talked to Joe because I, I had to get it out of my system, and um, I think I went home. We looked at the video, and we were trying to figure out which direction the rocks were coming from, and the first rock that was thrown at us, you can see it breaking the the all up in between all the plants you can see the rock coming towards us then you hear the the big thump the big old log that they threw at us and uh joe's uh asked me hey where did any of you fall i was like no man that was the freaking tree they threw at us and how big uh, is this rock that they threw at you oh uh, i don't yeah, think it's big i think it would have been like an acorn size Okay, and then they're throwing branches at you. Yeah. It, you, I mean, you can hear it cl very clearly in the video. And 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 that's when Joe asked me, did one of you fall? No, we didn't fall. Why? Because it sounds like something filmed. I said, no, that's a log that was being thrown at us. Yeah, and then that's that's the, the following week is when we went camping out there. And uh, we went out there. We put out some trail cams and we put out some recorders out there. Um our our trail cams went went off, but there was nothing ever that we saw in the pictures. But they were definitely set off, you know. Yeah, that was weird. They they kept being set off, but we couldn't find anything. Yeah. Um. And and there are hogs out there. And what's funny is that we we set our cameras kind of like in a, I guess like a ninety degree angle from each other. Uh, yeah, but we didn't see anything on on our pictures at all. But when we set the cameras out there and our recorders out there. And on the way out, we're walking. Uh, and we probably went in, I guess, maybe a mile, uh, at least that far, maybe a mile, mile and a quarter, I guess. But uh, on the way out, uh, not too far from where him and uh, his buddy had their stuff thrown at us, at, the, at them, uh, we heard two snaps in the woods, like something you know, was walking on the ground and snapped some branches or some twigs on the ground. So we stopped. And we're kind of looking at each other and we take one step and we took that one step we're here to pop again right and uh they were like holy shit so we just kind of stopped and we just kind of oh, yeah. listen and we didn't see anything else and then we walked the rest of the way out but yeah that was that was pretty strange because we heard a pop and we kept walking and we looked at each other and then we heard a pop again and we then that that second pop we stopped and as soon as we took one step it, we heard a pop again and then we stopped for about I don't know, five minutes or so and just kind of checked everything out nothing ever came out you know just to be clear you knew that there's no other people out there this is not this isn't somebody walking out there pacing you guys this is something else yeah 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 there's no uh and in that particular area just like in walter's area i mean there's no houses around there if any other cars come down there you're going to hear them or see them um um yes yes and like, like where we park just like a little area where people can park you know they want to go hiking back there but we were the only vehicles back there that morning or that evening because it was already uh the evening time when we went back there and a lot of times when we go out into the woods and stuff we try to get out there early enough to where we know nobody else is out there because when we're cleaning up all the spider webs from the night before that morning oh yeah 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 no that's always a lot of fun getting into the spider webs yeah, but, yeah, yeah. That that's that's like my telltale sign if anyone's been around. If if all the spider webs are gone, then someone's been walking through there. You know. Well, that's a very good point. Actually, it's a excellent point. So going back to this tree, I'm just really intrigued with it. It it is as you said. This is not a force of nature that did this. No. This is this is something did this. What. Um, was there any, I don't know if you guys checked the grounds or anything on the ground that could have, you know, like footprints or? Well, the, the ground is, is too too hard to even leave any 
any drug prints. Right. And and where that tree is at, it's actually a, quite a bit off the road. Uh, and even where that branch is broken, it's it's not on the road. And you know, back there, it's just just so thick, and uh, you know, the ground just so covered with leaf, and you know, and everything else on there. Yeah, I'm looking at it. it's it's pretty. Uh, it's good. Just got a lot of growth and stuff on it. No, no, no good spots for footprints. Right. Um, did you guys get a chance to look at the tree and see if maybe there's some hair or anything like that? Any other uh, possible evidence on the tree itself? No. Um, you know, it, it, it's so hard to to find uh, hair out there in the woods like that. You know, I. I do look, but it's it's. I mean, I mean you got to be out there with a magnifying glass sometimes, you know, because uh, even on trees and bush and stuff like that, it, it's it's hard to see what what's hair and what's just a tiny vine, you know. Mm -hmm. so it, it, and, well, it's just really interesting how this thing is twisted and then shoved down to the ground, and then kind of propped up or, uh, you know, shoved up against that other tree. Well, how would that happen? Exactly. I mean, when I saw it, I, I I was thinking to myself, wait, I was just here with Joe, and I don't remember that being there. And just the destructive nature of the twist itself shows you that it took an external force to actually do that. Yeah, and even, you know, assuming, I mean, kids or people playing on that would not you know it would take an incredible amount of force to, to do that yeah I actually i just sent will uh the pictures uh you sent them to me i sent them to you yeah oh geez <laughs> i'm more trying to send pictures to will oh i did okay so oh, no i got them okay you did okay so the top part of, you know that the picture i showed you it, and, then the, and then the second picture the one on the ground is the one that belongs to the tree that's broken on the top. And the one that's actually leaning in the ground, leaning against the other tree is the one that's stuck in the ground. Right. But I don't know if you want to say that to Tom. Yeah, it's obvious this is, uh, you know, the more you look at it, it's just like there's no wind or anything yeah. that caused that. And like I said, that tree is probably a good seven, eight feet where, where that, uh, you know, I'm gonna call it a sapling because it's not a full grown tree. It's Still kind of young, I guess, but it's maybe a good four inches thick, or just snapped off at. And then the one that's stuck in the ground, it's maybe I don't know, inch and a half round, but it's a long, like like I said, it's almost like a javelin, and it's stuck in the ground. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Well, listen, guys. Um, every time I hear from Will that Joe's got something. And Walter's got something we're real excited because you guys always get some really interesting stuff. And this today is no exception. So, um, yeah, yeah, we're going to keep going out there. You know, I want to go out there. If I can get out there this weekend, I'll get out there next weekend for sure. Now, Joe, you run the JRG, well, which is the Jevening Research Group. Do you want to give people your contact info? Yeah, if anyone has any uh, uh, input any suggestions any uh encounters you want to talk about you know i'll i'll certainly listen to them especially if you're here in texas i, I mean i try my best to get out there and meet people you know i i, I think i've got a pretty good track record in, in doing that uh, but uh yeah my email is jrg.hillcountry at gmail.com and yeah shoot me an, an email man we'll get together and uh like i said I, I don't mind meeting anybody or you know driving that's for sure not you know walter on those is uh Man, he jumped with both feet in on this thing. So, you know, I know he'll, he'll back me up and help me out, too. Absolutely. All right, guys. Great update. Great information. Be careful when you go back out there. Yeah, we will. Which we, you know, we, we, we do try. We do try to be careful, you know. All right, fellas. Well, listen, we'll look forward to any updates you have. And um, folks, stay tuned for the next segment. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com 
That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open.